source code dot text what this is going to do is it's pretty much just going to take the text of this request all the crap that we need to crawl and we're going to store it in a variable called plain text so again we're not we don't really care about the extra crap that happens behind the scenes we just want the text the links the images the good meat of a website so right now all of my good stuff is stored in plain text that's what we can sift through so the only other um, kind of transition I need to make now is is pretty much this right now I have all the information from a web page however since we're using this class right here beautiful soup we need to take that and convert it to a beautiful soup object and that's because this class right here it needs its data formatted in a special way to be able to crawl through it and sift through it and sort through like all the links and stuff easily so my beautiful soup object I'm gonna store it in an object named soup now in order to create an object it's actually really easy just put the class name and the one parameter that you pass into it is that text so basically plain and simple this is all the source code from the website whatever web page we said to crawl now when we have this soup object this soup object is the thing that we can sort through so okay find all the links in soup find all the titles in soup so I know it's kind of confusing so far but you guys are gonna see something really cool right now so since we have all that data in soup we can do something like this say we wanted to I don't know what's an easy thing to do all right we'll say that we'll uh, let's gather just the um, the titles of each item so maybe we just wanted to make a web crawler to gather the titles of each item just so we can sort through them easier well we just can't be like okay get the title of this uh, how do we type it in because even though that you know if we were talking to our friend then he might see what the titles are our computer doesn't understand that language so what we need to do is if we right click this and inspect element we need to find something in the source code that is unique so we'll say okay this is the title right here so we can't just say links because you know my name's a link the categories are links what trait is specific to this title that we can tell beautiful soup to use well actually this class right here item name no other links except the titles have that class so we can just copy that and basically what we're gonna say is okay gather all of the links on this page but only if they have the class item name and whenever it does that it only gets the titles so in order to do that put for link in suit find all now this parameter is gonna go through that source code and find all of a specific item depending on um, the information you give it and I'll show you guys what I mean right now so the first thing it says okay what element do you want me to find well we want you to find it links and of course links are named a um, for anchors in HTML so find all the links now if you just ran this it will return all of the links it will return you know um, the category names the ratings names we don't want that so we need to give it one more parameter and that's this add a comma and in between curly braces remember um, the item name was a class so it says okay you can either put the attribute such as ID class um, so on and so forth there so it says okay what um, attribute do you want me to look for and after this you add a colon and then you give it the value such as item name I said that kind of word item name item name so what this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through all of your source code and it's gonna pick out the links with a class of item name so again this is how we tell beautiful soup to get all the titles I know it's kinda weird but hey it's a computer not uh, smart as us or maybe they're smarter than us I don't know haven't really figured that out yet so right now it's plucking out all of the titles well okay 
I have like a million things to teach you, but let me refresh this so I can. So whenever we inspect these elements, this is what it's gathering, basically, whatever's highlighted right here. But now it's saying, okay, well, what do you want from here? Do you want the href, pretty much the URL? Do you want the class name? Do you want the crap that's inside here? I mean, this is a lot of crap. Do you want me just to give it, give everything to you back? Well, let's say that we actually only wanted the, um, the URL. So the link address of each one. So what we can do is we can say, okay, we're gonna make a new variable called href and it's gonna be equal to link because remember, everything it gives back is treated as link and we'll put get href. So again, what this does is it says, okay, I know you're looking at this entire thing right here but we don't want all this extra crap. We don't like need the anchor tags and stuff like this. The only thing we want is the text that's inside this href attribute. So for each item, what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you this. And actually, let me print this out real quick and you guys are gonna understand what I mean. So now if I print href, let me run this real quick. All right, so of course, if we just run this right now, nothing's gonna happen because we um, didn't call it, so let's call it right there. And just to test, I'm gonna throw in max pages is one. So now let me right click and run Bucky and check it out. And why is this not, oh, I see. All right, so what we did is we accidentally put the page equal to one and we put this, so um, since one is not less than one, it never ran. And also forgot to do one other thing. We also need to increment the pages each time, even though we're only searching one page right now. So again, let's run this and check it out. So what this basically did is it went to that page and for every single um, title link, it pulled out the href or the URL and then it printed it out on the screen. And then of course it went to the next page, but um, that's when our condition broke right here. So of course, if we're actually crawling it and gathering this data, it wouldn't be very helpful because this URL is great for, you know, whenever I was designing the website, but if I try to go to one of these in my browser, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So what is a better thing to do is if you add, actually, let me just do the shortcut of this. Actually, I'll do the, I'll do it the right way, I guess. So basically, you have to look, okay, this URL ends at trade, the trade directory. So what we need to do is if we copy all of this right here, we can build a complete URL by writing href, put this equal to https buckysroom.org, and then add the ending part of it. And now whenever you run this, we now have a full URL. So again, that URL works, this one works, this one works. What we did is, let me close these to the right. We now successfully built a web crawler that goes through every single item and pulls out the URL of it. So again, that is pretty much the very basics of how Google, um, pretty much pulls links from your website. So another thing that I wanna do is I wanna show you guys, well, what if you don't want the URL? What if you just want the title or something? Well, what you can do in that case is this, and even if you don't want the title, this is actually a pretty good to learn. So for everything you pull out of a link, it's good to store it in a new variable. So set the title equal to this. Remember, all of that link information is still in that link variable. So you always add link. Now to get the information inside it, I'll just edit, edit this real quick. Now the part inside your link, right here, the string without any of the HTML, that is actually um, a parameter called string. So it's gonna say, okay, 
this link is the entire um, HTML, but we only want the text inside it. So that's when you use string. So now, if we were to do something like print title, and run this, what it's going to do is, of course, we printed the href as well, but now we printed the title of it underneath it. So at this, this is the URL for this item, this is the URL for this item, so on and so forth. So check this out. We now have a beginning of a very simple but very cool um, web crawler, spider, whatever you want to call it. And in the next video, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is actually make this more dynamic because right now we give it a certain number of pages, basically giving it a list of URLs and it can go to that and when it's done, it's done. But what if we wanted this web crawler to go on forever? Such as we want to say, okay, go to a new page, get those all link, get all of those links, crawl those, and on those pages, gather those links, crawl those, and it can just going keep going on and on forever. Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys in the next tutorial. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you then.